Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at lists, and in particular looping through lists and also strings. Alright, let's get going. So let's say I have a nice and a naughty list and I want to print out the names of the nice list one by one, knowing that this list is constantly changing. Do I have a good way to do this? Or how about if I have a list of numbers and I want to print out the numbers that are less than or equal to 5, but the numbers could be anything. Is there a good way to do this? So my first thought is to make a list of numbers and check each item in the list one by one to see if it's less than 5. But this is a bad solution. Why? Because it doesn't work if the number of items changes, that is, it's not a dynamic solution. And two, the code starts to look ugly if you have a lot of items in the list. A technical way to say that is that it scales poorly. So as far as what we want, what we really, really want, we want code that works for any size of a list. So here's our solution. We call it iteration or looping. If you're taking the APCSP exam, you'll want to know this term, iteration. So for the iteration, we have the command, which is a for. We have a temporary variable. We have an in. And then we have the list name, and then we have a colon. Then we have the code that's part of the loop, and that's going to be indented. And inside this indentation, item, or whatever name you gave to that variable, will be equal to the item that you're on. The structure is a lot like that of ifs or functions, in that you have the colon, and the indented part is the part that's part of the if, the function, or the loop. So now let's see it in action. I'm going to make a list of numbers. Then I'm going to apply my formula for item in list. You can also think of it as for singular and plural. So in this case, so for number in numbers, colon. And that's going to loop through this list numbers. So inside this loop, I'm just going to print out the number. And here's how it's going to work. It's going to do this first line first for number in numbers. And that will set this temporary variable number equal to the first item in the list, which is 1. So then it does the loop and it prints out the one. Now the loop is done, so it's going to go back to the for number and numbers line. It's going to set the temporary variable number equal to the next number, which is 54. And then we'll run the code inside the loop, which prints that number 54. Then this process repeats for each item in the list. Most of the time, I'll do something more interesting that just prints out the numbers. And a lot of times what we'll do is combine the for, so combine the loop with an if. So you're checking each item in the list for something. So in this particular example, I'm checking to see if each item in this list is even. And if that item is even, I'll print it out. So again, this if inside of a for is something that you'll see all the time. You can also loop over strings. So in this example, I have a string name equal to Samuel L. Jackson. And I can print out each character individually, just as I printed out each item in the list. And just as before, a lot of times you're going to be putting ifs inside the fors. So for this particular example, I'm checking to see if the letter that I'm on is a vowel, and if it is, I'll print it out. So obviously, this is not the only thing you can do, but just one more time, I wanted to show this algorithm that you'll see all the time. You have the for loop, and inside the for loop, you'll have some sort of an if. Common mistakes. So really, the main thing people do is they get confused about how they name their variables. So just to look at this formula again, it is for item in list, for item in list. So you want to be sure that your temporary variable item is first, and your list is second. Don't mix up that order. Another way to look at this is for singular in plural. You're always going to do for singular in plural, for item in list, for number in numbers, for letter in letters. So inside the loop, usually you'll be using the singular one. And if you look at the right at the program run, that's what I expect, the items one by one. If you accidentally print out the entire list, you won't get what you expect in the run because you'll print out all of the items. Another example here, I'm going to use an if inside the for loop. This one is what I expect. I'm basically looking for the number 2. And when I run it, I find it. And if I accidentally use the wrong variable name here, it doesn't find it. Because numbers, which is the whole list, is never equal to 2. All right, so here are a couple things that are relevant for the APCSP exam if you're taking it. The first is that you'll see the term iteration. Iteration means looping. So fours, whiles, which you'll learn later. But for now, fours. So that's what you want to remember. You'll see this fancy word iteration. It just means for loops. The second idea that's going to come up is the idea of lists managing complexity. So I'm going to show that right now. This will come up in the APCSP create task. And you'll have to be able to talk about how lists manage complexity in your code. So on the left, we have a code that iterates through numbers or loops through numbers. And on the right, we have the same code without a list. So in these examples, the code on the left is a little bit shorter than the code on the right. But you can imagine if I had, say, 20,000 items, the code on the left would be a lot shorter than the code on the right and a lot more readable. 
So when I have a known number of items, lists are going to manage the complexity of scaling, meaning that my code with lists is going to be a lot more readable than the code without lists when I have a ton of items. So now let's look at when I don't know how many items I have in the list. For instance, if I have a function with a parameter that's a list. So here's what the code with lists looks like. But as far as the code with individual variables, I don't know what it looks like because I don't know how many items I have. There's no way to print out every item if I don't know how many items there are. So if I'm trying to do something to an unknown number of items, lists are going to manage the complexity of scaling. Any of the code's going to be a lot neater the more items I have. It's also going to manage the complexity of unknown quantities, meaning that I can just use this one for loop and that code's going to work no matter how many items I need to loop over. Finally, I'm just going to mention some other ways we can loop. The first is the while. So if you come from scratch, you've probably done it this way before. I really dislike this method for beginners. There are three parts that need to all be in sync and beginners always mess this up. Even if that works, you have to recognize that list bracket item number is an item of the list. It's a lot of ways to mess up, even if you come from scratch where you've seen this before. Another way to do it is to use the for variable in range. People tend to screw this up because they're not sure if this starts with a one or a zero. And even if that works, you still have to recognize that list bracket item number is an item in the list. This is a little bit better than the while, but I still don't recommend it. Finally, you may say, but Dr. Wu, I need a number or index in addition to the item, in which case I'd say use enumerate. Don't use the while of the four, those are terrible. Use enumerate instead. I'll throw it up here so you know what it is and you can look it up yourself. All right, so this is the part where we do the solutions to the lab. Pause the video and try it out yourself. But here are the solutions. All right, this first one wants me to print out the numbers one by one. So my formula I'm gonna follow is four item in list, four singular in plural. So I'm gonna type four number in numbers with a colon at the end and print number, print the singular. And there you go and that's good. The next one is just pointing out that you can do the same thing with strings. All it wants me to do is print out each individual character of the string. So let's follow the formula one more time. Four singular in plural for a letter in name with a colon at the end. And I print out the letter and it prints out the letter. So that's good. The last one's a debugging one. You should always probably press run first. And here, what does it do? In line three, unsupported operand, list an int. So numbers, plural is a list. And you can't mod this with two. So in this one, I'm trying to print out all the even numbers. Really, I want to compare each individual number, one, two, nine, three. And an individual number is singular, so it's number. Number mod two is equal to zero. And when I run that, it prints out the even numbers, and it's good. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.